There's a gap in the freeway. What? 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 How big is a gap? Fifty feet. A couple of miles ahead. This is crazy. Jack! Jack! What if I shift into neutral and just keep the engine revving? No, you'd have thought of that. What then? What? What? Oh my God. What? Jack! Floor it. What? Floor it! It's an interchange. There might be an incline. Floor it! Fine. Everybody, hold on to your seats or whatever you can. When we hit the gap, heads down. That's it? That's it? That's all we can do. Let's put these underneath your seat, all right? Put your bags underneath the seat. Hey, I didn't mean to shoot the guy. Hold on. Is this really going to work? Now, we just saw what the blue block did. Now, what's this bus going to do? It's coming up to an interchange. There's a missing section there in that elevated freeway, and the freeway's flat. That bus is going to go just like the blue block, like that. That's what has to happen. That's what physics tells you will happen. So let's see what happens in the movie. Now just wait a minute here. Now this was done years ago before computer animation. That bus actually jumped over there. But how the heck, how the heck did it do it? We got to go back and take a look in slow motion here and see exactly what happened, all right? So I'll just rewind this thing back a little bit here. and play, and then I'll set it up so we can go frame by frame when I want to.
and the end of that road is absolutely flat. That bus is doomed. But watch what happens. So we'll just step along here. Going frame by frame. And soon we'll see the bus. There it is. Look. There's some ramp here on the front of on the end of the bridge. Where the heck did that come from? And that's there so that it gives the bus an upward velocity so it can make the jump. But watch, watch this ramp. It goes away. Okay? It's on a hydraulic system. And it wasn't up when we saw the view of the bus coming for it. And then it just went up. So now when the back wheels come by, the ramp is gone, see? And the bus can make the jump. Okay, so the viewer doesn't realize how this was done because it happened so fast. But the stunt guys, they know physics, and they have to get this bus across the gap. And they succeed, okay? That's really quite cool. All right? I think that's really neat. So that's pretty unexpected, unless you know about this uh, hanky-panky going on. All right, so I want to show you another unexpected thing. And this has to deal with why things float and why they don't. So you probably know that rocks sink to the bottom of the lake and boogie boards float. And when the density of an object is greater than water, it sinks. And when the density of an object is less than water, it floats. And if the density of an object is exactly the same as water, it will just be neutrally buoyant. OK, so it's rare that you have a chance to control the density of an object to make it go up and down as you would, you would like. So I brought along a little, a little demonstration that allows us to uh, play around with the density of an object. So I need the guys to switch over to my video camera now. If they can. There we go. Okay, so this is a little, a little bottle, and I'm going to fill it up with water. And um, a any kind of bottle will work for this if you want to try this yourself later on. Just needs to have a, an opening at the top that you can cover fairly, fairly well with your thumb. And you fill it exactly to the tippy, 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 tippy brim, like that. All right? Then you get yourself a piece of household aluminum foil and rip off a little square of it, maybe an inch and a half or so. And then you crumple it into a ball and you press it for all your worth. I mean, you really crumple that thing down much as you possibly can, right? Okay. And then you stick it up on top of the bottle and it floats. Now that should surprise you because the density of aluminum is 2.7 and water is one, so aluminum should sink. But in that crumpled ball, there's so much trapped air that the air and aluminum together has a density less than one, so it floats. All right? So now I'm going to put my finger up on top of this, push it under the water, and then push down on the, on the uh, bottle. And you can see that I made it sink. I hope you can see it down there. Can you? And if you want it to go down, just tell me to make it go down. Down it goes. 
And if you want me to make it go up, tell me to make it go up. Up it goes, right? Down, up, down, up, middle, sure. What, what do you want, you know? Total control, right? So what the heck is going on here? How can I do this? So let's just switch back to the, to the laptop, if we can. There we go. So what's happening here is when there's no pressure, I've tried to make a sketch of the aluminum foil in this solid, uh, I guess it's gray, I'm colorblind, I don't remember what this is, it might be gray. <laughs> and the trap there is these, uh, these pockets here. And when there's no pressure applied to the top of the bottle, the air pockets are big and the density is low and the thing floats. But when you press on the top of the bottle, you increase the pressure greatly and you compress the air pockets by the ideal gas law and then the density becomes high and it sinks. Just with your finger, you can control this thing and make it go up and down. It's a wonderful way uh, to, make, to make money. A lot like that pickpocket talk that we just saw, you can, you can bet your friends, you know, and make this thing go up and down and they're going to say, you're crazy. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so I have just one more thing that I want to show you, and really this is more of a story than anything else. We uh, teach electric circuits in, in physics, and it's done in the high schools as well. And there are two, two ways to connect two light bulbs to a, a power source. Circuit one is a connection that would be called a parallel connection. And circuit two there is a circuit that would be called a series connection. And a common question that you would ask students on a test is, you know, which way would you get more light? And if you work out the, work out the problem, these are 40 watt light bulbs. And in circuit one, the parallel connection, you'll get two 40, white bulb, 40 watt bulbs illuminated. You'll get 80 watts of light. But in the series connection, this voltage is shared amongst both, and it turns out each light bulb only turns on with 10 watts, 10 watts, so it's really sort of dim. So I brought along two circuits like this. This one here is the series connected circuit. It's circuit two. And this one here is the parallel connected circuit. It's circuit one. And I said circuit one would be bright. So I'll plug it in. And sure enough, and if I plug in circuit two, it should be dim. And sure enough, OK? So now here comes the story part of this. We bought a house, my wife and I, built in 1929. And went down into the basement after he bought the house and turned on the lights. My God, were they dim. So I went to look at the light bulbs, and they're all 100-watt bulbs. And you're thinking, what the heck? So went along and followed the wiring, the really old wiring, and lo and behold, the bulbs were wired like circuit two in series, the wrong way. They're wired the wrong way. And we saw the owner, previous owner of the house, you know, a few weeks afterwards. And I said, Tony, you know, the wiring in your basement is, is all wrecked. He said, what do you mean? I did that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. I said, Tony, it's in series. It's not in parallel. And he said, wait a minute. That's the way they taught us to do it at C.P. Allen. Thank you. That's all I've got for you. <laughs>